Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. This is my brand new project, my BMW 135i N54. Come check it out. So for those of you unfamiliar with the 135i, it's basically a twin turbo six cylinder three liter engine. Being rear wheel drive, it definitely packs a punch. As you would have guessed by the title of my video, this was the cheapest low kilometer 135i in Australia. So I'm based out of Sydney. Uh, I was looking for a N54 version, which is the twin turbo version rather than the single turbo N55. And I wanted to find something that didn't have too high kilometers. Being a 12-year-old car the, and performance model, the more Ks, the more riskier it basically gets. Um, and I found a, a bargain of an offering. So this one wasn't stock which is sort of what you would want to find in an older car because then you know everything is well looked after, hasn't been pushed too hard and isn't going to blow up on you. This car had some minor mods but thankfully these were the kind of mods that I would have looked to do myself. Currently it's got a catalyst downpipe, it's got a dual cone intake and it's MHD stage 1 flash tune. So previously I've owned a few Golf R's and a Lancer Rally Art, all four wheel drive turbos. And moving into a rear wheel drive turbo, twin turbo especially, it's a completely different experience. The whole feeling of how you drive it is, is it's hard to describe. People say that they're more like a V8 rather than a standard turbo being twin turbo. All the torque comes in low and fast and doesn't really peak very high. So buying a modified car has its advantages and its disadvantages. Basically you save money on those mods if you're planning to do them yourself however it comes at the cost of not always fully knowing what has happened to the car every time you buy a used car every every person puts on a bit of a salesman act they're never going to tell you everything that's happened to cut the car whether it's positives or negatives so there's always an unknown factor having a quick look under the hood I've found that it looks to be in pretty good condition um, However, researching online, I have found a previous owner and seen that there possibly could have been a couple issues in the past. So what I did do was I managed to get this car um, to the workshop. Um, the guys at Eurowork in Sydney, they, did, they gave it a, a full pre-purchase inspection, which was amazing, not, not, not a big cost. Um, and basically it gave me the peace of mind to purchase the car. In this pre-purchase inspection however, there were a couple of points that were brought up. Uh, the car currently has the wrong coolant in it, so that's something that I need to fix pretty ASAP. It's also got a minor coolant leak from one of the intercooler tube to the passenger side. It's also missing the under tray completely, so whether that was from breaking it or, or an optional delete, we're not sure. As well as the rear parking sensors don't work at all. So there's a couple little things here. It's a 12 year old car, you can't expect it to be perfect, but it's, it's pretty good for its, its age and the price I got it for. That 
being said, it has traveled almost 90,000 kilometers, which I believe is probably somewhere around the 60,000 miles for those of you that use the Imperial system. At this, at this age, generally, you're gonna start finding some issues. So benefits from the previous owner, they told me that they replaced all the main gaskets, the main o-rings and common failure points. Uh, the service history has been pretty good. Um, and that's really important in these engines as they're basically the analog style of engine. Everything is high pressure and puts out high performance, but also puts a lot of wear and tear on each of the parts. BMWs, especially these turbocharged ones, are notorious for leaking oil. And there was no leaks, thankfully, when I purchased it, but time will tell. So driving around, it, it, it's great fun to drive. It's very different to my past Golf Rs. Um, they had a lot more explosive power. The torque really came on at around that three, 4,000 revs and just got higher as you as you went up the to the peak. Whereas this car, as I said, being twin turbo, really hits down lower and then sort of flattens out, which has its positives and its negatives, but regardless, it's a fun car to drive. I do believe the previous owner put a little mod in um, of unplugging one of the recirculation valves, gives it that sort of blob valve sound. Um, not sure how I feel about it, but for now we'll keep it. One of the main differences that I really noticed right away was the sounds coming out of the engine. Um, Golf R's being two liter engines with a four cylinder. There's not much grunt in them. Um, however, I did have an amazing aftermarket cat back, which really sort of amplifies the sound. This car having a much larger engine, almost 50% larger. Boom. You really get a, a loud engine noise, however, the exhaust note is just not there. It definitely needs either some changing to the tune or, or I've, I've heard of some little minor mods to the exhaust which can really make a difference. But I'm keen to look into that further down the project. So there's plenty of things I love about this car. There's also a couple things that I hate, but I'm going to go into those in more detail in future videos. So make sure you subscribe and follow me on this project as we delve deeper into the 135i. Also make sure to like this video. Being my first video, I really want to get that support out there to help make more people see this and make the project grow to give me more motivation to post more videos. So really appreciate it guys, thanks. So in Australia, all of the 135i Sport, to my knowledge, come with the M Sports package, which is just a little bit of sporty extras, make the car a bit nicer. Um, you would have seen on the steering wheel, a little M badge. This is not an M car, but it's about as close as you can get without the massive price tag. There's also little door sills and other little bits and pieces. Overall, it creates a pretty nice sporty package. It's definitely not an M. Uh, as long as you don't stick an M badge on the back, I'm, I'm fine with that. So brand new, I believe these are about $75,000. So that was obviously back in 2008, when this would have been one of the top of the line sports cars that you could buy. I definitely did not pay that amount for this car, which is great. Depreciation sucks for whoever the first owners were, but all the better for me. Okay, so the big question, how much did I pay for this car? Well, looking at where the prices of cars are at now is a good indication to really give you the value of how much I paid. So on car sales, which is Australia's sort of number one car sale location, um, you can see that I've searched for the three variations of the 135i, as well as put in a 100,000 kilometer maximum, um, just to make sure it is a low kilometer. As I mentioned, I was interested in this. 
Um, straight away, you can see the lowest is 19,500. This is a convertible, but the convertibles seem to be less desired. So going down another convertible, 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 convertible. Okay, that's a um, that's a coupe E82. So the cheapest currently is twenty two thousand dollars Australian. Um, I actually bought mine for fifteen thousand dollars. So that's a pretty good saving compared to where they're at now. Um, I'll calculate the uh, American value for you, for you overseas visitors, but it's a bargain and I'm very happy with my purchase. So that should basically wrap up the first video on, on this project. Really appreciate you watching and give it a thumbs up because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. Let me know in the comments below what you liked about the video and what you want to see more of. Really keen to improve this project, so let me know.